Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and thank you for joining me in this week's training. We're going to be developing a contact manager from the ground up. So we're going to start with a blank workbook, and we're going to work every field, every line of code, and every format so that you can see exactly how to build these. It's going to be an amazing training, so let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome. I'm really happy you joined me for the data entry form training. And in fact, I'm going to start with a completely blank workbook so you can see every step I do, every mistake that I make, and every point and feature that we add, we're going to do together in this video instead of me going over something that I created previously. So I'm really excited to try this with you and see how, how it goes and let me know if you like it or if you don't like it, if, uh, let me give me your feedback on that so we can continue on with that. All right, we're going to start off with a blank workbook. So we'll go into a new workbook and what I want to do is I want to keep those first two columns for admin. So we're going to color those gray. Uh, I always like to, these are the ones that are going to be generally hidden, so we'll give those a color. I'm going to use our first row as our header for our data entry, so we'll increase that. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, highlight the first, uh, color the first one so we can uh, know that we put our title in that. So we're going to go ahead and right click and format those. We'll give it a fade as we do, so we're going to click on fill effects. I'm going to start off with a medium blue, say here, and then fade down to a very light blue. And our light blue will be consistent for our entire page. So let's just go ahead and highlight those first, the main area with that light blue so we get that fade effect here. So we'll go ahead and click on that light blue. Okay, now we've got our background set. Let's go ahead and put in our title. And we're going to create a contact manager on this. So why don't we just write in contact manager. And that's what I want to create for you, a contact manager. Let's go ahead and merge and center this. And then we'll go ahead and increase the font so that we can use that. In merge the font and let's choose uh, something, a large font perhaps. Let's take a look at something that's going to stand out a little bit more like impact. And then uh, increase the font a little bit. There we go. Okay, and we're going to change the color of that. And I also want an icon on this, and I've got some icons saved. Let's go ahead and open that and take a look at what kind of pictures I've got. I've got some pictures. I'm going to bring them all in because we're going to use them all except for the IDs. We're going, to, we're going to add those a little bit later on, but the icons, I want to bring them all into the sheet. So let's go ahead and highlight those. And we're going to pull in all the icons that we're going to use automatically and insert those. Okay, now I've got all the icons and uh, let's draw and move them. So I'm going to use the select all and we're going to draw them all, make a box around them all and then bring them over to there. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to give this a logo. So this looks like a good contact manager. I'm going to shrink that and I want to bring this a little bit closer to what our theme is. In fact, before I, before I, let's go ahead and right click and make sure we merge but don't size those. We're going to change these properties a few times. And but we always want move but don't size with cells, so that's important. All right, good. Now that we're on this, let's go ahead and change the color of this, something a little bit closer to our theme. How about this light blue? Okay, our con our logo set, and now we are good to go on that. Let's go ahead and start putting in some fields, and I want to track some fields there. Let's put in contact name here. And then city, we want to track that as well. Phone, let's start that off in five. I'm going to start it off five, seven, and nine. We're going to skip rows. So let's do that. And we don't need this here. And then uh, we'll go ahead and we're going to use six fields. And then in row nine, we'll put the phone number. All right. We're set with that. Now let's put in six total fields. So I'm going to use this for the name. I'm going to use this for the label, right? This for the label, this for the field. E, so we're going to skip one. And then uh, let's go into G and put in more labels. Address, go down to state, and then email. All right, now we can format those. I've got all the fields. Let's format those. I'm going to hold the control down and click them all. Right click and then format those cells. 
and let's bring it up here where you can see it. First, I'm gonna add a border. I'm gonna use this blue color. This is gonna be our theme blue. And I'm going to outline it all, but I want the right side uh, dotted line, but everything else is solid border. And then on the left, I'm gonna create that. It's gonna be white because I want to make those fields in white. So let's right click those and format those cells. This is where our data is gonna be located. So let's fill that in into white color and then we'll give that a border that's using the same color, the solid border on the three right sides. We're gonna keep that dotted line on the left. All right, good. Now we can double click these so we can expand those a little bit. Also call them E. So what I do is I want, to, I want to create a table, a table below, and when I select on this table, I want the information to show above. So that's what I want. It's a bit much here. We want, let's, let's unmerge this and bring this, we'll just bring this, uh, let's say right here. That's fine. I'm going to bring the contact manager. I want it over the center of the form. We'll probably adjust this as it goes along. Contact manager we have now. Maybe all capitals looks better. Okay, so that's good. And we're gonna put a set of buttons up here too, which we'll use. And so I also want to show the picture. So uh, I wanna show that picture and I wanna start a table. The table's where I'm gonna store the data. So let's skip one row. And I also wanna use one row for our data mapping. So let's highlight this. We're gonna use this for our data mapping. So we're gonna color it different. This row is gonna be hidden. So we're gonna color that in gray and give it some borders. This will eventually be hidden. I'll, our table headers are gonna actually start in 12. So let's go ahead and write down those same names. Contact name, and then we'll go with address, because we'll use the long field for that. City, state, email, and then I'm gonna use one for this picture link in J. All right, so we've got, oh, we skipped one phone number phone number yeah we got to have phone number so we'll put that in I and then uh, picture all right so that's gonna be a link for our picture because we want an ID picture here let's format these headers let's center them put them bold give them our font color and then give them a background format cells also a faded background on that so we'll fill it click on the fill effects and give it a fade how about something very similar to the top fade just so it's consistent with our theme there we can go two different colors let's go middle color so it's a slight fade okay now we've done that and we'll also let's put a border around it too actually format the cells I know that's a little bit off screen but uh, border and then we'll use the same color and then um, which is this blue and then we'll give it a thicker border on the outsides and then a thin border on the insides and bottom all right, so we're good there. Now we've got our table. We're gonna use this for data mapping, so that's important. Now let's go ahead and format the, uh, the table itself, and I know we can use format. We'll just go down a little bit. I'm gonna make it all white, and then I'm gonna add a conditional formatting that, uh, let's go with no fill. Then I'm gonna add a conditional formatting that colors the odd rows. So we're gonna add a new rule, and we're gonna use a formula for that. And I'm gonna use a mod formula, and I've got that saved, it'll automatically pop up because I use it so often. And then what I'm gonna do is format this, and I'm gonna format this in, a, in a, just a little bit lighter blue than our theme background color. So I'll click on more colors and just go up a little bit. I want just a lighter, a little bit lighter than that. Now, I'm gonna color all the rows, but often what we do, you'll see me do is color only the rows with data. If you wanna color only the rows with data, add an and here. And then, and then we would do in dollar D thirteen does not equal and then blank, right? So we could do that as well. That'll color all the all of the blank rows. But for now, I'm just going to leave it uh, coloring all the rows, coloring all the even rows, which will color that automatically. And we'll put a border around here, and I'll put a border around uh, around the. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this up just so you can see what we're doing here. Format the cells, and we'll put a the same, using the same color. Add that thick border, and then I'll put a, do, a dotted line in the middle. Okay, so now we've got a nice little table here. We will have to expand it a little bit to cover the data, but I think we're good here. Let's, let's put those thick borders in the header. All right, so we're our our data is our coming into the picture here. We're gonna add some buttons now. Now we've got our table. We've got our field. Let's change the font colors on these to our theme color, which is that blue here. Now let's go ahead and add some buttons in here. I want save, 
save the form, I want add new, I want cancel new, and I want delete. So there's four buttons. So we're going to add four buttons. We'll insert shape. And we're going to use this rounded rectangle here. And I'll set that, let's set that height for about 0.26. And the width can vary about 1.5, but that can change. I'm going to set the theme on this one. We're going to use that theme there. And now basically what I want to do is I want to duplicate this. We've got our button a width, and then uh, we have Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. I think four buttons, five buttons is actually right. We're going to use one for the add, add the picture. And we're going to use two sets of buttons, two sets. One set is going to be for new contacts, and one set is going to be for existing. So for new contacts, if you have a new contact, we're going to we're going to use a save save contact. And for also for the new contact, we want to cancel new. So it goes back to the existing. So we want that. And then for the existing button set, we, we're not gonna, it's going to save automatically. So we're going to put add new contact. And then we want delete contact. So that's the set, delete contact. OK, so we've got those four buttons. Let's justify them all on the right, holding down the shift. And then we're going to set the parameters. So let's all the way on the right and in the middle. We want that because we want to put that icon on the left side. And we'll adjust the button sizes accordingly. And we'll do the same thing. This one we'll, we'll probably do in the middle. Let's see, right in the middle. OK, so now we've set them all. And this one's going to be add ID picture. OK, we're good to go on that. Now let's add in our icons. And let's go ahead and move all of them to the top because these buttons were added first. If I move, if I move an icon here, it's going to be underneath, right? We don't want it under. I want it on top. So all we have to do is select all, and then bring it all the way to the top under format. Bring forward, bring to the front. Okay, so now we're good with that. Now let's separate these out. I'm going to size all these icons. There are different sizes now, but we're going to size them all correctly. I'm going to give it something like 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So I want it just small enough, and uh, I think we're good. They, they, we're good now. So they're a bit small, but that's okay because our buttons are not that big. So let's move these over. We're going to use this little check for save. So we're going to keep that for save. And then we have a plus here with our contact. We'll use that for add new. We have this. It's kind of like a cancel, so we're going to put that on cancel. And then we're going to use this for delete contact. And then I'm going to use this for add ID picture. Okay, we'll get those centered and straight. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. All right, good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap. I want all the middles to match up on these. So let's do the select all again. You see I use that a lot, so I've got it saved in my favorites. I'm going to format this. And I'm going to align the middles there. I'm going to do the same thing for this button, these buttons here. I want all the middles to be the same, aligned middle. Okay, now we are good with that. And now let's let's just move the sizing a little bit. Let's set the size. All right. Good. That looks like it's correct. And we'll size out the cancel button too based on that. Cancel because we want to get out of the cancel mode. Okay, so now we got cancel. The one for delete, well this is a bit larger button, so we'll move that in a little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll move the icon over on the left side so it's consistent. Add new. Looks like it's almost sized right. All right, and we can move the icon over a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to group them and name them. So I'm going to hold down the control button, control, and I'm going to group them, and then I'm going to name this button because I always want to know my button. Save, contact, button, BTN. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing with each of those. And then we're going to group it, and then we're going to name it. Cancel, contact, button. It's helpful. And so we, when we look, we always know what are, and then... We're going to group this one and then click Add New Contact button. OK. And then Delete Contact. And then we're going to group them one more time. All right, Delete Contact button. Delete Contact button. OK, so now we've named all our buttons. Now I've got two different groups, and I'm not going to show these buttons at the same time. Save Contact and Cancel New. I only want to show those two buttons when we have a new contact, when we're ready to enter new contact. So I'm going to group those, and I'm going to call this New Contact Group. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but this one's going to be for existing contacts. So I'm going to group this one. 
and then we're going to call this existing contact group okay so now we've got that and let's get let's go ahead and set this one up as well move this over here and this icon over and then we want to add this ID we're going to assign macros to all of these buttons of course after we create the macro but our first job is to assign these names and picture okay so we're going to group that and we're going to name that as well uh, add ID button okay that's good enough now we've got that we'll move that over because we want that right over what I want is I want to place the picture right here I'm gonna expand this a little bit expand this a little bit oh I forgot one thing one important thing let's go ahead after we group we also need to size as you see that so let's go ahead and color remember after you group you always want to reset size and properties move but don't size move but don't size now when we expand those columns our buttons will not increase in size and that's what we want we want we want those sizes to be exact and what if I want to move this button over I, I just need to hold the control and select and I can move both of these over bring it a little bit closer and consistent with it is all right now what I want is I want to move these I want to keep these consistent these are both of these groups are not going to show at the same time so we're going to put them right on top of each other because only one's going to be shown at the same time and then we'll go ahead and align this one to the middle too all right now we've got our buttons at the middle we're good with that and now let's go ahead and set now we've marked the first two columns as for admin and we're gonna hide those and I want to assign just three different variables because there's things I want to know I want to know what the selected row is selected row and we'll put that right here in B let's just say 16 for now and then uh, I also want to know if it's a new contact it's gonna be true or false okay let's put true for now and uh, I also want to know if the contacts being loaded we need to know that because when we make a change here we need to know is it the change because the user has selected the contact below and it's automatically loading or is it actually the change the user is making manually so we need to know there's two difference and when this is changed I need to know those and I'll explain that so I need to know contact load true or false Normally it will be false except when we've selected a contact from the table below and it's loading up here. All right, so we've got those are the really the only three parameters I want. Let's color them differently, something orange. That'll be hidden. Remember, you'll want to hide those when you create your contact manager. But uh, for now, of course, it's going to be visible so we can work. Those are really the only parameters. Now I also want to do some conditional formatting. I want to know the what the selected row is. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's highlight our table and let's create a formula for that table conditional form format under new rule and I'm going to use a formula and what I want to say is basically b3 is equal to row All right, and I'm going to assign a very contrasting color to that so let's go ahead and go into fill fill effects and we're going to use a dark blue and a light blue font so let's select a very dark blue let's say here and uh, here all right, so we've got that. Let's go even a little bit darker. So, all right, that's good. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure we give it a white font. So we're going to do it bold and set the font to white. Okay, so now we've got that. Now B3 equals row. Good. So you see now 16 is, so now 16 is automatically covered. If we change this to 15, it's going to automatically change. And in VBA, when we select a row, it's going to change this to whatever row we've selected. So that's how that's going to work. So now we're done with the selected row. And now what I want to do is I want to also, we're going to do some mapping fields. That's very important. So I want to copy these fields and I'm just going to paste them over here. We're going to use that for data mapping. And data mapping is really, really helpful when we are using data. Uh, uploading information so let's go ahead and we want to make sure it's on the same row and these can eventually be hidden we're just gonna paste that in there paste it all because we're gonna use this for and let's color these these gray as well I want to just make sure that you know that this should be hidden because it's not it's a it's an admin thing and it's it's something so coloring it gray is our admin color so we know that uh, that this is really for admin and these rows would be hidden normally would be hidden we're going to use this for our data mapping and the idea is is that contact name what column is this what column contact name is column let's write those column temporarily equals column this is column five okay but a four excuse me so I want to know what all these columns are and I want to map these so let's 
write that and I want to put the picture here too picture and I'm gonna put that actual picture there because I want to know what picture is there so let's right click and just add some white space for that so that we can know alright so because I want to put that picture temporarily I'm gonna put that picture file name right in here and then what I'm gonna do is once it's added and saved I'm gonna put it right here that file name right in here so that when we load it we know what file alright so the idea is from 4 all the way to 10 we need to save those informations so contact name is in column 4 right and I'll show you how this plays into it in, in a little bit let's reduce that address is in column 5 we'll just continue on here city is in column 6 state is in column 7 phone is in column 9 and email is in column 8 okay great so now we've got all that mapped out now continuing on with their data mapping there's two different types of data mapping so when we make a change here let's say let's say I make let's say I make Fred right I want to know by going here what what column should Fred go in it should go in column 4 right and we know that because I know what what name it is I just need to know the column I already know the row the row is going to be whatever selected but I need to know the column so what we're going to do is we're going to say now I'm going to show you what this column is this column is column 13 so it's going to say the current column 5 right 5 plus 8 what is that for right so so for example in VBA it says if I want to save this to the table how do I how do what's a quick way to save Fred I want to save it right here right I want to save it we have selected I want to put it right here how can I do that fast I know the row so we know we know it goes in row 15 but we don't know what column it goes into we do know what column because it's in column 4 but how do we know this is well we know it's the same row as Fred we know it's the same row we don't change the, the row but it's the current column 5 plus 8 is 13 so we know all we need to do is add saying what is in the call the current column plus column 8 what is that what number is there oh it's 4 oh, okay now I need to know now I know exactly what column to put it in so that's what we're going to do so now we're gonna mapping the opposite way when I select when I select a specific row with a contact how do I get all that information loaded up here well what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to look to right here this row which is gonna be hidden I'm gonna say what is the range here that I need to put it in in this case e5 so let's put in e5 now I know what range that is all right we'll center that e5 and what about the address well the address goes in h5 so let's go ahead and do that h5 so this tells us what range we have and then we can hide this and the city of course goes into e7 the state goes in h7 email goes into h9 and the phone number is in e9 okay so we've got all of that mapped out and the picture will put in m4 because I'm just going to show the picture here I'm not going to show the field so let's just put m4 as the picture so that means when we load when we load this file name will go right here into M4 and then we can see we can pull this and we can load the ID picture based on that we're gonna end up expanding this a little bit alright so now we've got that let's go ahead and save it <laughs> better do that right and uh, I'm gonna put this in my folder right here because I've got my folders and we're gonna add it as XLSM we need to make sure that it's XLSM because we're going to be putting macros in here anything that macros must have an XLM extension so we'll save that there alright now we're saved always got to save your work now let's continue on let's see what else do we need to do we've got the pictures we've got our two button sets we're almost ready for doing our VBA I think we're ready for that let's go ahead and check to see what else we've got our data mapping done on all the columns we have already alright great it looks like we are ready for VBA now what we want to do is we want to first add selection chains let's go ahead and get some sample data now I created another one let's just go ahead and pull I'm gonna pull in some data here uh, from a recent one uh, we got a sample I want some data in here and there's no reason for me to type out the data let's go ahead and pull this data in here and then we're gonna put that right in here alright now we've got some data that that's gonna be helpful we can close this one 
Okay, so we've got our data, but we don't have any pictures. We don't need any pictures. That's no problem. Let's go ahead. We can format these phone numbers. Let's format this column as special. And we'll go into more number formats and then special and we'll do a phone number of course you can use any phone number now we formatted our phone numbers this state we can reduce this we don't need this as a big we don't need this and we can center this the state that's okay all right looks good we got our date in there here's what I want to happen when I select any contact I want to one I want to change the conditional formatting by changing this row and I want to load that data right in here and we can do that through VBA so let's go into VBA and continue on so we can complete this application into the developers mode click on visual basic alt f11 will get you there and now we're in the developers mode we're gonna do a little bit of on sheet macros and what do I want? What do I mean by on sheet macros? Well, those are macros that run on the sheet itself. And we want to do a few things with our on sheet macros. I want to do some on sheet on selection sheet change. So let's go ahead and do that on the worksheets. Selection change. I want to create some macros based on the selection change. When we select a line in that table, I want the data to load. So let's do that. But first, uh, I want to remove any possible errors. If we do if target count is greater than one then exit sub this helps us get, when we select large areas to remove from possible bugs so that's always something I include if I'm not using merge cells if you're using merge cells you may want to increase that so that's important next up let's go ahead if not intersect target range and what is the range now it's the range of our table and our table starts on column D row 13 and it goes all the way to J and then a large number so let's just go 999 okay is nothing right if we select something then do something right but I don't want to just if we select I need to check a few things first I want to make sure that there actually is value that there is data in column D so we want to do and range D and target row dot value is not empty then then we can do something now we got end if okay so now what do we want to do well the first thing I want to do is I want to make B2 which is actually our selected row I want to make that our selected row so range B2 dot value equals target row that's gonna and then next up I also want to load the contact but I'm gonna comment that out we don't have a macro yet on that contact load that's gonna be the macro that runs with to load our contact but I commented it out because we haven't written that macro yet so let's go into our code and check it out and now when we select a row you see b2 changes I did move that up one row I like it in row two b2 so so now that works great okay now what I want to do is I want to load that information in here so we're gonna start writing a macro to do that back into the VBA we're gonna right click and we're going to insert a module we're gonna give that a name we always want to name our modules into the properties let's call this contact macros in this workbook we're just creating one module and all of our macros are gonna be located in our so the first thing we want to do is I want to create uh, I want to dimension some variables because we're going to be using these throughout the all the macros so dim contact row as long and we're going to create another line dim contact row uh, contact column as long okay we're going to be using those throughout so it's important let's create our first macro sub contact load that was the one that we just uh, wrote but we commented out and of course we're going to focus on sheet one entirely that's all our data so with sheet one and you'll notice you'll see this it automatically came up you'll notice the end if I use uh, auto hotkey for that and we'll go over that in another time but that's that's why my end with automatically types out because I use something called auto hotkey and I program it in I'll probably include that as a bonus in one of my courses uh, auto hotkey of course is free but all the programming that comes into the automating the VBA I may add that as a bonus so I'll keep that in mind alright with sheet one what I want to do is I want to first make a check B2 of course is where our row of our contact is so I want to make sure that actually has data all right if it doesn't have anything in there we we got to exit out so if dot range b2 dot value equals empty then 
exit the sub. Okay, we don't want to continue because we need that row. That row is critical to load. If there is no row, exit the sub. All right, we want to set B4 to true. B4, what is that? That is the contact load. B4, contact load is fall. I need to set that to true while it's loading. And then once the macro finishes or before the macro finishes, we're going to set that back to false. So let's set B4 to true. And I'll show you why that's important a little bit later on. Dot range B4 equals true. Okay equals true and let's comment that set contact load to true okay so now we're setting it at true all right we'll reset it and in fact let's go ahead and just set it to false and then write everything else in between all right that way we have both of those it's always good to do that just so you remember to do it set contact load to false. Now we're going to write all the code in between those two lines. All right, So everything's going to be in between here. So now we haven't forgotten that. We do want to set, we have a variable contact row. We need to set that. We know that's located in B2. Equals dot range. You like that? It was pretty quick, huh? B2 value equals. All right. All right. We're done there. That's the contact row. Set that. I'll try to comment these out. All right, so now we've got the contact row. Now what I want to do is now I've got the contact row. So now I want to loop through this. I want to go all the way through here from four, column four to column 10. And I want to pull this number right here. Excuse me, I want to pull this range right here. And with that range, I want to put the data from this contact row. I want to put this in here. I want to put this in here and so on and so forth. So mapping is not required, but it makes coding a lot. There's a lot less coding, right? So there's more than one ways to do this, but if we use mapping, it's very, very simple coding, and that's why we use it. So we're going to create a four next. Four contact column equals four to ten. Those are the columns. Equals four to ten. And then next contact. We always want to close our loops so we don't forget. Okay, then we write everything in between here. So what do we want to do? It's a very simple loop. We want dot range. So what is the range? And the cells, we're using dot cells. What is the cells? Well, the first thing is cell 11, right? That's row 11. Why row 11? Let's look at that. Row 11 is where all of our data mapping is. This is where I, so I want to run. I need row 11 will stay consistent, but the columns will loop from 4 to 10. I'm going to pull this value and use that to know where to place the data in column mapping. So that's what we're going to do. So cells 11, what is the column? Well, it's contact column. It's a variable. Column. Right? And what is this value? This value is this value is the range, right? Is that range? So that's what we want to do. We want to range that, close that loop. So we want to put that in there. Value equals what does it equal? Cells. We know we know the contact row. And we know the contact column. Because it's looping. So dot value. So that's it. That's how we loop it. That's all we have to do. It's a very, very simple. And that's all. This is what this macro is going to do. It's going to, let's just go over it one more time so we know exactly what it's going to do. It's going to go through column four all the way to column 10. It's going to look at this. It's going to look at the range. It's going to say, where do I put this name? I put this in E5. Where do I put this address? I put it in H5. Where do I put this? I put it in E7. So that's how we do it. That's all that is, is really necessary for that code. And next up, all right, next up, we're going to load the picture, right? I want to load that picture. If there is, if there is a link here that links to the picture, I want to put the picture, I want to put that link right here. In that this M4 will do that, but what I want to do is what I want to load the picture. I want to make it visible, and to do that, I want to make sure that we have not displayed any other picture. So I want to first delete any picture that might be there, in case we have, not, and then I want to load the new picture. So if there's a link here, I want to take that link and I want to load that ID picture. I want to put it right here. That's what I want to do. So. Let's increase this a little bit, give it a little bit more space. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and write some code that we can do that. First of all, when we delete a picture, we don't know if the picture exists. So we need to catch the error. So we'll do on air, resume next, and we'll create shapes. We're going to call it, this is going to call thumb 
pick. Okay, that's gonna that's gonna be the name we're gonna use throughout it. So, so that means regardless of the picture, they're always gonna have the same name. It makes it easy to work with and makes it easy to to delete. So we're gonna delete it because we don't know if it exists, but if it does, we need to delete it. Delete any pictures. Delete pictures. We'll put delete thumb nail picture and then we'll just put if any if any okay so we put that comment out and then we can do on air go to zero okay so that on air go to zero that just closes the on arrow so that if there's any errors after that it'll it'll automatically zero. now what we're going to do is i want to load that picture if it exists if dot range m4 remember our picture link is going in m4 dot value does not equal empty it concludes the link then what I want to do is I want another I want to run another macro. We're going to call this contact display thumb. We haven't written that macro yet, but we will soon. Okay, so we're going to run that macro if it's going. To, and next up, we need to set the new contact. It's for sure if we've loaded a contact, we need to make sure it's not a new contact, right? So we need to set new contact and that to false, and that is located in B3. So let's go ahead and set that now. Range B3 equals false equals false remember we looked in um, right here new contact b3 we need to set that to false because if we're loading it it's going to be false for sure so we do that b3 is false all right next up we need to set our buttons right we know it's going to be an existing we know it's going to be an existing contact so we need to make sure that we set our button so dot shapes right remember we grouped them existing contact group remember we named that group existing contact dot visible equals true right we want to show it's an it's an existing contact and the new group is going to be hidden dot shapes new contact i think that's i think that's the name we name it if not it'll throw up an error but that's okay i think that's the name we gave it dot visible equals false okay because we do, it's not a new contact and it's an existing so we need to make sure we do that all right i think that's it for that macro Good. If there's any issues at all, we will certainly know about that. Uh, let's take a look. Now we can go back into sheet one, contact load. We've got that. Now we've created that macro, so that'll work. Let's go see if there's any bugs when we load it. Let's take a look. Oh, we got a bug. Oh, of course, we need to comment that out because I haven't created that yet. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just comment this all out. Let's comment this line out because we have not created that macro yet, so that's fine. No problem. But as soon as we do, we're, we won't get a bug. Okay, that's good. All right, so now when we now we select the line, it loads all the data exactly as we have it. Great. All right, we're good. Uh, we want to format this phone number too, so let's give it that. Let's also give that the special format, special and phone number. Excellent. So now we've got that. Put that on the left side. I think we're good. Now we've got load contact. Let's continue on and let's do for new contact. And when we click, now we have the button sets, right? When we click this button here, I want these fields to clear out, right? And I'm including M4. And I also want to set new contact to true. So let's do that. And I also want to clear B2 out because I don't want I don't want to show any row. I want to make sure that's cleared out because it's a new contact. Let's go ahead and write that macro right now. All right, we'll call this contact new. Sub contact new. And of course with sheet one, we're only working with sheet one here, so we want that we want that to do. All right. And next up we're going to set B4 to true. B4 to true. That is our new contact. New contact to true. Okay, that's important. And I want to clear out these cells, right? So remember, I want to clear out E5, E7, E9, H5. So let's go ahead and write some code that does that. We don't need that. E5, E7, I believe, E9. We want to clear those out as well as H5, H7, and H9. Those are all of our six fields. And of course, M4, which is our link. So we want to clear dot clear contents. Okay, not clear, clear, we clear all the formatting. We just want to clear the contents. So we're good with that. And B3, we want to set that to true. B3 actually is our new contact. B4 is contact load, contact, contact load. All right, that's a load. We're going to set that temporarily, right? And B3, let's go to dot range. 
B3, which is the new contact, set that. Have that had that mixed up for a second. Equals true. This is new contact. It'll say that, and we'll set B4 back to false before the before the macro ends. So all we need to do is now we need to set our shapes. Basically, it's going to be the opposite of this. You see that shapes. So let's go ahead and copy those and paste those down and make those the opposite. Existing contact. We don't want to show that. This is a new contact. It's going to be false. New contact. We do want to show that. So let's set that to true. All right. Before, let's go ahead and set that to false. Our contact load. We're not going to load it. And I'll show you why that's important. Before equals false. Contact load to false. Okay. So we've got that. That's a very simple macro. And uh, let's go ahead and assign that macro now. I think we have everything. We've got these. We're clearing out the fields. We have set B4 and B3, right? B3, let's set that new contact so we know what that is. Okay, let's assign that to the button and see how that works. Well, we want to. We don't want to click on the group. We want to hold the control, control that, and then hold the control. We want to assign the macro to this button and this icon. So right click, assign macro, contact new. Click that. Save. Always like to save before running macros in case some bad thing happened. Click on new. Okay, that looks good. We have our button set changed, and I'm going to make contact name required. So let's go ahead and add a conditional formatting to this. Conditional formatting. Uh, new uh, new role and then format cell if it's blank if it's blank I want to make it yellow so that it's clear to the user that that is a required field that's a really bright more that's a really bright yellow let's do a little bit less okay so now when it's now this is yellow that's denotes it's, it's required but when they add something in then uh, it goes back to white okay so now we've got new contact we're good with that next up we're going to use the save contact. We want to program that. Let's get these right justified over here. I want to program the save contact macro. So let's go back into the VBA and program that macro. Down here we can uh, add this macro in contact sub contact save. Alright I do want to run a check with sheet one. I want to run a check to make sure that they have the name correct and that they have actually at least added a name. So what we're going to say is dot range let's go with if if and then uh, that would be h e5 i believe is the name so if e5 value does equals empty then we'll do a message box message box please enter a contact name all right so that we got that just in case they don't and uh, exit sub. We don't want anything to happen. Exit sub. Okay. If they haven't entered the contact name, at least we want to exit out of there. All right. So now we uh, have set the contact. Now what we want to do is I want to determine the contact row. And the contact row is going to be basically the first available row. And contact row equals dot range D. Let's go 9999 dot end XL up dot row so that's going to give us the last row but I don't want the last row I want one after that so plus one that's going to give us the first available row so now we've got the contact row now we can run our loop remember our loop for contact column equals four to ten next up we have our the ability the same thing we wrote last time dot cells we know our contact row contact row we just set it and now we know our contact column it's going to loop from 4 to 10 contact column we've got that covered and the value of that what's the value of that the value equals what is it equal dot range and then again we're going to do the same thing we did before cells 11 right the row 11 cells dot cells 11 is the row number where our map data is and the contact column. So we've got that, the contact, contact, contact column. All right, so we've got our, we know our contact column is going to loop. It's going to, that's going to tell us our data. So we know that value. And so whatever that value is, value. Okay, so you see here, 
right here is going to tell us what the cell number like E5 or H5 or what the cell number is and this is going to tell us so this gets the range the value of that so it's like the value of the cell and this tells us exactly where to put it so that's it that's all we need to do in our loop then we can just close out our loop next contact column all right again we need to let's go ahead and copy these shapes again we need to copy the shapes let's do ahead this we're going to make sure since it's a no longer a new we are going to paste in our shapes we, existing contact is true new contact is false once we save it it's no longer new so we want to set that and that's it that is all we need to do there we want to make sure let me just reset we do want to make sure that we have an existing once we save it it's no longer a new contact so we want to set b3 to false so let's go ahead and do that dot range b3 that is whether it's b equals false okay good now we're here now just so we know it's not no longer a new contact sometimes this can be important in this one it may not be critical but i want you to get used to knowing the difference between a existing contact and a new contact so we've differentiated those there all right we're good with that let's go ahead and take a look at this macro we've it's such a simple simple macro here so that's why we have it there it's very very simple that's why we do data mapping because the, the code we have to write is much less all right contact save is done let's go back in and sign that macro to our save button we have our save button here but it's within a group so we're going to hold the control down and click on both of those right click assign the macro and we're going to assign it to that new macro here contact save all right and of course we want to make sure it should tell us that there is no please enter a contact name perfect because we haven't yet all right let's go ahead and save a contact name sally smith and the address is one three main street give it an address and a city of los angeles and the state of California and let's go ahead and give it a phone of through oh, you phone number and an email Sally at gmail okay so now we've got everything saved and let's go ahead and save that contact and there we go Sally Smith all the information has saved all right now we are we've saved the contact let's move in to contact delete we also have to delete a contact so let's go ahead and write that macro so we can assign that back into the vba we go we'll go ahead and write some code here sub contact delete all right okay let's go ahead and we want to let's go ahead and add in a just a double check to make sure that they do with sheet one that's for sure and we're going to say if message box we'll add a message box with the prompt there are you sure you want to delete this contact and then we're going to say okay that's vb yes no scroll up a little bit there we go and then we'll give it a title delete contact that gives us the title all right and then say if equals vb no means if they say no then exit the sub so that means that gives us just a check to make sure that they want to do it and also we want to make sure that if the row if the row is empty we want to exit that sub too we need the row number so if it's empty we're just going to exit so if dot range b2 equals empty then exit the sub b2 is the row so the contact row that we're going to delete so that's very important we need to make sure that that it actually is a value so we can set the contact row contact let's go ahead and copy this first make it easy on us contact row is going to be b2 so contact contact row equals b2 that's going to give us the contact row now we have the contact row we are ready to delete it so we're going to say dot range and then contact row and and then colon and contact row that's good there's many ways to delete that but let's say entire row delete okay great so now that we're gonna entire row delete we're good with that and next up we can let's just select the first row the first row of data 
the first contact just so after we delete it we'll know in case that uh, so we can select here's the idea when we delete when I delete let's say I delete this contact what what am I going to show here I really have two options I can show an existing contact or I can go into the add new so in this case I'm just going to select D13 and select whatever the first contact is so you have two choices after you delete it so in our case we'll just say dot range D13 let's capitalize D13 dot select it will select that and that's going to load it automatically and let's go ahead and save it and we'll run our macro well first we'll sign the macro click on the delete contact button hold the control click on the icon right click assign macro contact delete okay great now we've did that let's go ahead and select the last one Sally Smith that's loaded up delete the contact are you sure you want to delete this contact let's click no for an answer okay that exits right let's try it again delete contact are you sure you want yes okay great Sally is gone and the first row is selected and loaded perfect now we've got to delete it all right let's go ahead and click cancel new when we add new I want to be able to cancel out of this new one so let's go ahead and write that macro as well and this will be a very very simple macro sub contact cancel new and all we're going to be doing is making sure that if there is a value if there's a value in D13 it means that there has to be at least one contact if there is at least one contact then we can select that contact so we can say with sheet one we don't really need this it's only one line of code sheet one and then if dot range D13 dot value does not equal empty then okay then we can do then we can just do dot range d13 select select okay good that's a very 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 simple macro that's all we really need to do there and then now we'll go ahead and assign that macro to the button back in there click on the button here and the icon here and then right click and then a click assign macro so cancel new okay now we can try it out click cancel new perfect it selected the item and the icons went back let's go ahead and update that I want to move that icon a little bit over here a little bit off okay all right good that works great now let's take a look now I want to add the ID picture so I think we're done with those so let's go ahead and and write that macro back into it so I want to add the ability I want to give them the ability to add a picture here and then I wanted that picture to load when they select the contact. So let's go ahead and write that macro. The first thing is we want to add the uh, macro that we're going to attach it. So let's write that here as well. Sub contact attach them. So let's write that. We're going to dim picture file as a file dialog because we need to pull the picture up as file dialog and we also need to set with sheet one so let's do that we're always working with sheet one and next up we're going to set the picture file set the picture file is equal to application file dialog and then mso we're going to file dialog we're going to do a file picker so that's what we need and then we're going to say okay with the pick file let's go ahead and give this some parameters here the title and we'll take title as select a picture to attach uh, title we're going to say equals select a contact contact picture okay that'll give us our title and we're gonna add some filters onto that because I don't want any type of any type of file I only want all picture files let's do that all picture files so the filter is going to be all picture files all right that's good and next up with this I'm going to see what type of filters they are let's put a comma here we need a comma okay and let's see what kind of are they are we're gonna say I'll picture files filters add and we've added what kind uh, I want JPGs and uh, I want JPEG because you know many pictures have that let's see I also want GIFs so we're gonna do star that means any star anything text before that so we're gonna want that gif and how about we also of course need PNG those are those are common PNG as picture file 
n p n g next up we also want uh let's see bmps okay and tiff that's enough bmps are not as common anymore but still common and uh we'll do tiffs as well all right okay so now we've got them all and then we're going to set that to one okay in the position one all right we're going to set that if dot show does not equal negative one then go to what in case they don't select anything this prevents there's show does not equal negative one then go to no selection no selection and what that's going to do is just going to skip so we're going to write no selection down here so that'll skip our next so we're going to say sheet one where we want to put range m4 that's where we want to put the file link right m4 dot value equals selected items right one okay this is going to place this is going to put the file name in m4 let's go that's it that's we want that file name in m4 and that's going to put that full file path right there all right so we're done with the with that and uh, we're done with the picture file we can do end with on that I think we need to place no selection farther down here way down here because we don't want to the next stop I want to display it but I don't if there's no selection I want to I don't want to display anything so next up we are going to check to see is b3 false what I want to see is I want to know if it's a new contact here's what I want to happen if this is a new contact we don't know what row it's in yet but if it's an existing contact we can put it we can put it the file name right here right I can put it here if it's an existing because we know the row so let's check if b3 is false then we know it's an existing contact so that's what we want to write if dot range b3 dot value equals false then dot range j that's the column where the picture file name will go and what is that b2 value sheet one dot range b2 dot value that is this is our contact row right here this is our contact row so we know j in the contract row dot value all right that is going to place equals dot range m4 because we just placed it in m4 right so we know where it is already that's going to place the file name also in the table but only on existing contacts so that's important as well all right next up i want to then display the thumbnail but we're going to do that with another macro so we're going to write that contact display thumb okay so we're going to do that i'm going to write that macro in fact i'm going to write it right now but i'm not going to put anything in there just so we can avoid sub contact display thumb okay good so now that there's nothing in there but it's not going to prevent an error contact display thumb so let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if we have any issues or errors. Let's go ahead and assign this. Again, click on the button and control, click on the link. Hold the right click, assign the macro, and we're going to click on that. Contact attach them there. Now, when we click on this, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Contact display thumb. Display thumb. I gotta be there. Okay. All right. Now it'll run. Now okay good now let's go ahead back into that let's, let's go ahead and click add picture now and it'll add a picture we can add a profile picture all right and the file name got added both in the column the row here in column j row 19 as well as m4 so that works great all right now what i want to do is i want to display that picture i want to display it here in the thumbnail so let's write that macro now complete that macro and we'll click on display thumb and we're going to dimension uh, the picture path I need to know that path as a string and uh, also with sheet one as we have done in the past um, also I want to again delete any picture just as we've done here so let's copy this all right and copy that and bring that down it's the same thing here just in case that picture exists I'm gonna we're going to delete it and then we're gonna create a new one just like that and we're gonna wrap that in a air trapping there as well so next up what I want to do is I'm gonna set the picture path equals m4 picture path equals dot range and then m4 so that's gonna set us our picture path 
well, let's go ahead and comment that picture path. Okay, so now that we have the picture path, we can work on that. Okay, and with what we want to do is we want to say dot pictures, and then we want to insert. What do we want to insert? Picture path. Okay, so now we've we're going to insert that, and what I want to do with that is I want to say with the shape range, shape range. Now I want to do some things. Well, first of all, with that, I want to lock the aspect ratio. So dot lock aspect ratio. That's important. In equals M must true. That's important. And then also I want to set the height probably 80 about or so. Because I don't want to make it too big. We need to equals 80. And then um, now I want to assign a name. That's very important because if we're going to delete it, we need to set that name every time equals and then thumb pick okay so that's gonna set our thumb and then end with so we're done with that as well as we're done with the end width for the picture insert this width is for the sheet so that we get our we keep our width and end width correct so we're done with the picture insert we're done with the shape range but now what I do is we've set it we have set the height we set the aspect ratio, but we haven't set the location. So we want to set the location now. We can do that with the shape that we just created. So with dot shapes, and then what is it? Thumb, because we've just named it. Now we know the name with thumb picture. And what do we want to do with that? Well, we'll want to set the left, and I want to put it right there. I want to put it right in column J. So we'll set that up. Left and uh, equals, and then I don't want, we can't use dot range here. Why can't we use because we're already set dot shape. So in this case we need to specify the sheet name. That's easy mistake to make not specifying the sheet name. Why do we need to specify the sheet name? Because the width is with shapes. It's not with sheet anymore. With sheet one equals sheet one range and then J four because that's the top area and then left. So I want to place that picture right about here. Not quite here. I want to place it a little bit to the left but we're going to start here. I want to place it right here and then I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to place and the same thing with top. Top equals sheet one dot range J. I guess I could have copied and pasted that. Range J4. And then dot top. Okay, so that's going to place it, but I, we don't quite, we want to move it over a little bit, right? So when we want to move it over a little bit, we use dot increment. Increment. Increment left and perhaps uh, minus say 20 or so. And then increment top, I don't, want it, I don't want it right at the top. I don't want it right at the top, I'm gonna lower it just a little bit, maybe 10 or so. So let's lower it from the top, dot increment, that way you can see both, and it's gonna be increment top. And then uh, perhaps 10, why 10? Why minus, because it's, if we 10 it means going down, minus left, mi the left minus 20 means moving to the left. So now we're done placing that, so that is, we're set up with that. All right, great. Now we're done with that. And uh, we've done, we've got the end width. This is for the sheet. This end width is for the sheet, end of sheet one, right? End sheet one. Okay, so now we're, now we're good with the display. Now let's go ahead and take a look in that and see if we have any bugs or issues. And uh, so let's we select on this one and select on this one and add an ID picture. We've already added it. Actually, we can just add it again. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the issue. Lot uh, ratio. No N here. All right. Run that. Okay. Good. Perfect. Uh, yeah. I think that's just about right. We can we can reduce this a little bit. And so there we go. Now what I want to do is I want to dis when I select it, I want to display that, right? When we load it, I want to display that. So we have the macro display thumbnail, but I want to add that. Remember, add that into the contact load. And here it is right here, but we need to uncomment that out and just making sure. So now when we run it, now when we select something else, when we select it, now, now we get that contact picture to load. We can add that picture again, add another person here. Great. All right, that looks really good. Let's say we want to move it over a little bit to the more to the left. All we have to do is increase that display. Scroll down here. Let's say 25, a little bit more to the left. We can also increase the height. Let's 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 uh, make it a little bit bigger, maybe 85, so it's a bit bigger. 
and uh, go back in here. And now when we select it, now it's a little bit bigger and a little bit to the left. Okay, and we can center this over a little bit over the picture. All right, we're good to go. Now, maybe we don't like these names extending all the way over. Let's put a space here, or two spaces, and I'm going to drag that all the way down here. And that gets rid of the, of the bleeding out of the text over into the other cells. All right, now what I want to do is when I want to make a change to any type of cell, I want that change to reflect in the row and the cell down below when we do that. So we can do that with change, with the worksheet change. And let's go ahead back into the VBA and see how we do that. Individual basic on the on sheet, we've done selection change, but now we're going to focus on worksheet change. And when we make a specific change to any cells, let's say between E5 and H9. So let's go ahead and use if not intersect between those. So we can start out if not intersect target range E5 through H9 is nothing and range and I'll explain this in a second B let's take a look three we want to say only but not on contact load so B4 must equal false B4 must equal false B4 dot value equals false then and what are we going to do well here's what we're going to do when before make sure contact load is not a false we only want this when the user is making a change not the type of change that when we select a contact not this type of change only on this type of change only on that type of change so we have to differentiate between those two types so that type of change, we want that to happen. What do we want to happen? Well, what I want to happen is I want to take, let's say, E5, and I want to put that into D and the whatever the selected row is. Now, we know the row is 17 because we've got it here in B2, but we don't know the column. Well, the column is actually 5. The column is actually here. It's 4. The column is here. It's 5. The column is here. So it's the current column, which is 5, plus 8, which equals 13, or in this case, column 16. So it would be this, column 8 plus 8 is 16. So all we need to do is add 8 to locate the column. So let's do that in Excel VBA right now. What we can say is that cells, and then what is the row? We know the row is in B2. So let's put that in range, B2 dot value. Now all we need to do is get the column. We know the column is exactly eight columns over from the target column. And we know that's the value. So it's cells, target, row, and then the target column plus eight. And the, whatever the value is of that, plus eight, that is dot value, okay? And then dot value. So what we're saying is here, whatever the row is, that's where we want to put it, the row of the table, the column of the table. What's the column of the table? The column of the table is located right here, target row plus the target column plus 8. This value right here is our target column, right here. This is our target column. So our target row and our target column equals target value. We want to be force false, and we want to make sure that we also do this on only existing and not new records. So let's go ahead and say, and range B3 dot value equals false, right? We don't want it on new, only, only existing records, and only when it's not loading. So B4 and B3 must also be false. Let's look at that. B3, new contact must be false. B4, contact load must be false. Now, when we change Fred, Fredding, it automatically changes here. And we want to change the address here. We can change this to Canoga Boulevard. And it automatically changes. Now, the mapping, because it pulls the column. So you see how little code that is? We can change the email address as well, simply by clicking here. And it automatically changes in the selected row, automatically here. So that is how we do that. And we want to change the ID picture. We can change that simply by clicking here, 
clicking here and the ID picture gets changed automatically and the link gets updated so when you change it back again it's automatically updated and if we want to change it back just click on the picture and then click the ID and add it right back and then it automatically goes right back so good now we're set now we've created our contact manager when we select it that is how we do it let's take a look add new contact cancel new delete contact worked we've tested that all right we are good to go I'm really excited I was able to show you this from beginning to end a lot of you have been requesting that if you do like this video make sure you download it and test it out yourself play with it and make changes for you remember this is very important if you want to increase these columns right or if you want to make any changes to rows you must update this mapping this mapping has to update any changes you make to rows or columns and you will want to make changes make sure you update the mapping accordingly so you don't run into too many bugs so I've seen that that'll help you out again all I ask of you is just uh, share this video I really appreciate that subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook of course join our Facebook group we have nearly 10,000 Excel experts at this stage waiting to help you so go ahead and if you have any questions join that group there make sure you see the links in the description thank you so much for joining me today mm -hmm.